Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Kay Nash. If you're new here, I deliver prophetic words and deep teachings in God's Word. I missed you guys. If you're already subscribed to this channel, I am back, but I can't make up words. So when God gives me something, I share it. Otherwise, I don't. So here I am. I'm glad to be back with you guys and I hope you're doing well. I feel like the Lord was talking to me about the word breakthrough. It's a word that's used very often in the body of Christ, but I did have a prophetic word about it, and I do have some activation tips to get your breakthrough to happen. So that's what I'm gonna be sharing today. If that's something you're interested in, stay tuned. All right, you guys, here's what I'm feeling from the Lord. Push for your breakthrough. Breakthrough is not guaranteed for everyone, especially when they do not listen and allow the wind to distract them. Stay focused. This is a season of focus and advancement, but you must obey and not get distracted by the enemy's tactics. Don't let him deceive you. You are more than this. You are truly more. So advance and do what I say. This is a time of advance. You know, the number one reason that people do not have breakthroughs, I think is because people do not listen to God. God told them something through a dream. God sold them something through a prophet. God sold them something in their own prayer time. God told them something when they were driving in a car and they did not implement what he told them in their life and then they do not have a breakthrough. You know, sometimes it could be the smallest thing, like God might tell you to clean your car and you don't know why that matters, but you don't know who's getting in your car. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't do that. Then that person doesn't get in because God doesn't want to embarrass you. So I just want to encourage you, whatever it is, whatever the Holy Spirit has told you, however he has told you, make sure you implement those things for breakthrough. I think sometimes we have certain things in our life that we seem insignificant. Yeah, I know God told me to write that book. Yeah, I know God told me to talk to that person. Yeah, I know whatever. And it's just like we kind of just blow it off because we don't think it's that big of a deal. But sometimes what happens is breakthrough comes from chain reactions. And what I mean by that is you listen to God, God then gives you the next step and then your breakthrough comes. But when you don't listen to God with the first step, why does he give you the second step? And sometimes things seem unrelated, but they actually are related. Sometimes you're like, well, that doesn't really matter, but it actually does. And so if you want to activate your breakthrough, listen to what God has already told you. Another thing is faith without works is dead. And I think sometimes we are in hope and we are not in faith for something to happen. And they look the same because we're like, yeah, of course I want that to happen. Do you want it to happen or do you believe it's going to happen? If you believe it's going to happen, you need to walk towards it. Faith without works is dead. You need to identify what in your life is hope and what in your life you're really walking in faith for. I've had to repent in my life before of hoping and not faithing because sometimes I'm like, yeah, I really wish that would happen. But am I really walking towards it? Am I really trying to push it out? If I really am, then that's faith. This is a true story. I used to spend four hours a day with the Lord, but I was still broke, despite the fact I was praying about money sometimes when I was in there. And sometimes one area of your life can be in alignment, but it doesn't mean that all areas of your life are gonna be in alignment because that area is. I was good before the Lord, as in my spiritual discipline was checked for the day, but my financial disciplines weren't. And I had to put in action my breakthrough, which at that time was making pillows and selling them. And I sold tons of pillows and I was able to move my life forward and slowly get out of debt and things like that. However, it's like I had to do something to push that financial breakthrough through. And sometimes, you know, you can ask God for money, but you got to sometimes work what he told you to work. And so I want to encourage you if the, the breakthrough is financial, don't only pray about it. Ask God for specific instructions to make money to get you out of that situation. Jesus. Mm. Another phrase I heard the Lord say is prayer without action is doubt. Jesus. Prayer without action is doubt. It's like you're praying and then you're like, well, okay, whatever. It's like, no, you need to walk towards it as if it was. Don't walk in doubt. Another reason breakthroughs don't happen is because the motive in our heart is not correct. 
And the Bible tells us this in James 4, 3, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives. Now, two people can ask for the exact same thing and one person might get it and the other person doesn't and one of the people is frustrated. And you might be like, well, so-and-so got this and why am I not getting this? Well, why do you want that, okay? Sometimes that was the right thing for that person, but it doesn't mean it was the right thing for you because you have to know your motives and you have to be honest with yourself. Now, I think sometimes it's totally fine to just be like, just because, you know? There's times I want something just because I like it. It's not because there's this revolutionary motive I have to change the world, you know? Oftentimes when a woman buys a pair of shoes, that's not gonna change the world, okay? It's because she likes that pair of shoes. I don't think that's wrong. However, sometimes we don't have breakthrough because we want something for the wrong reasons. We want it just to show off to our friends. We want it just because we feel insecure. We want it just because we feel like we have to have it in order to hit certain social standards. And sometimes you do have to have those things to go into certain rooms and look presentable and things like that. And so I totally understand that. However, it's like you have to really genuinely like the something, not just I want this because I'm trying to impress people or I want this to do evil, you know? It, you have to really ask yourself why you want it. And sometimes we even lie to ourselves on why we want something. And sometimes it really takes getting into our subconscious to really figure out why we actually want something. And if you're not sure about the word conscious and Christianity, I have a whole video I did about that. It is talked about in the Bible, and so you can look that up here. Um, so make sure your motives are right. Go before the Lord, allow him to search your heart, say, God, show me what my motive is, and maybe your motive is wrong. And sometimes it's not like super evil, it's just like a little bit off. And as he switches that, you'll often see more breakthrough. Jesus. Another thing can be unforgiveness. I often feel like when something's gonna happen in my life that's significant, God often asks me a lot of questions. And he often asks me, do you forgive this person? And I'm always like, yeah. And he's like, do you really forgive this person? <laughs> and uh, you know, I might have to go through something to forgive them. And you know, I hear people say this phrase sometimes, and I personally don't agree with it. And you know, it's forgiven faith. Well, that's not really forgiving. Like, it's just like, I forgive them in faith, you know? And it's like, no, you don't. It's like, here's how you know if you really forgive somebody. If you really forgive someone, when somebody drops their name, you don't start getting mad immediately. Some of you right now, you felt the Holy Ghost drop when I said that because if I was to say their name and I was having a conversation with you, something, something in you would start rising up. If that something starts rising up, you have not forgiven them yet. And this is what the Bible says. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you of your wrongdoing. So I think sometimes God, you know, blesses us in the process of forgiving people. If you had a really extreme situation, like you were raped, you were beat, you were kidnapped, like that's not an easy thing to forgive. And I think God helps you get through that process. It doesn't mean he's not gonna open any doors as you walk through that process. Um, and so there is grace for it, but there does have to come a point where you're at peace with it. Now, I don't think that means you have to trust people. Trust and forgiveness are not the same things. If I give you the keys and you crash my car, I'm not gonna let you drive the car the next day. Probably not, you know? It's like, cause I don't trust you to drive then. It's like, so trust and forgiveness are different things. You don't have to hang out with people. You don't, you don't have to allow toxic people into your house. Forgiveness and friendship are not the same things either. You don't have to be buddy buddies with someone, but you do have to be at peace in your heart. If you happen to see them in the grocery store, you're not gonna wanna kill them, okay? And um, because we have to live in peace as much as possible because over time of unforgiveness being there, it can actually start changing our demeanor. We can start being a little nastier, our face can be a little scrunchier and we're like saying mean things about people all the time. Well, there's often unforgiveness in there. I think we've all can struggle with unforgiveness. So if you're struggling with it, I'm not judging you. I've struggled with it too. So it is something that we daily sometimes have to do. If you have interactions with a lot of people, you have to forgive them. 
But I just want to encourage you, you know, kind of do a heart check if you're not getting a certain breakthrough in your life. And be, is there anyone that I'm not forgiving right now that could block a breakthrough? It's not always true. Again, if it's an extreme circumstance and you're walking through with the Lord, but sometimes it could be a little barrier that might block a breakthrough. Jesus. Mm. God, I just, I just pray right now that you would open our eyes, God, that we would have breakthrough in the name of Jesus, God, that we would see what we did not see before, and we would walk in faith and not by sight, and we would have breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I pray right now for your breakthrough. I pray right now for your doors to open in the name of Jesus as you go before the Lord, as you listen to him, as you forgive people, as you clean out your heart. I pray that breakthrough would manifest in your life. I pray that the ambassadors of Christ would rise up and get to their destination in Jesus name hallelujah mm. now in my prophetic journal that a lot of you guys have and more of you probably need to get it no I'm just kidding but um, there is an action step in there I don't know if you can see that but like you know if God told you to do something that morning write it down the action step thing and then be accountable you know check it off sometimes in my action area I put little check boxes and I check off the ones that I do as I do them so then I could quickly look back and be like, all the check boxes marked off, okay, they are. Um, and so, you know, write it down because I think it holds ourself accountable. If God told you to do something, you can look back and be like, eh, that check box is not checked off. And so, you know, and sometimes what I like to do also is um, take this and then put it next to my planner and kind of move the stuff over from the action area um, into my planner as I feel led. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can get it at knashministries.com. Just click on my store tab. Also, I just wanted to remind all of you that we are going to be starting our membership um, training for the new year, February 4th. I'm very excited about this. We're going to be doing deep training in different areas of life. We're going to be doing prophetic training, deep training um, on Zoom. So make sure you sign up. If you haven't signed up, if you're already signed up, it's coming February 4th. Okay, that'll be our first class. We'll have a class each month. Then we'll be doing deliverance training. We'll be doing financial training, all sorts of trainings each month in order for you to be fully spiritually full in order to do whatever God called you to be. So make sure you sign up for that at knashministries.com. Just click on the membership tab. But anyway, I love you guys and I will be having another word coming out soon. All right, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.